Music is more than just notes on a page. It is more than just something you hear in the car. It is more than just something you hear on the radio, on your iPod, or something that you hear on the TV, in a commercial, or in a movie. Music has the power to heal. And before I get too far into that, I'll explain how it is involved in the world. So in the world today, we are all connected on a level of just being around music. If you're in a music hall, you are connected just by sitting next to someone that is listening to music. You may not necessarily be talking to that person, but you are connected to them on a level of just listening to the music. You are listening to the same music that is being played up there, whether it is instrumental, whether it is choral, whether it is a rock concert, or whether it is a movie being displayed on the screen that has music playing in the background. You are the observer, you are the person sitting in that vicinity and you are connected in that way. If you're in a fast food restaurant, I'm sure you can all connect with me in the way that you hear music playing in McDonald's or Subway and you all can hear the music. The purpose of that is for you to feel kind of relaxed and for you to enjoy your meal and for you to feel at least a sense of being and connecting with your meal. At least I hope you're feeling kind of relaxed when you're connecting with your meal. Um, <laughs> you also feel connected when you're standing in an elevator. I feel semi kind of anxious when I'm in an elevator because the next person that comes in, I'm like, ah, I don't know who you are. <laughs> I don't want to talk to you. I'm just a very introverted kind of person. But the music that's playing in the elevator, I can connect with that person because then I feel kind of relaxed when the person comes in the elevator. And I'm hoping that you can connect on that level with me, knowing that if the person comes in the elevator, you can say, okay, I'm kind of like not so anxious anymore. There's something kind of soothing playing in that elevator. I'm not going to be so anxious anymore. And you can also connect with other people in the way that music in your headphones that's playing, you are connecting your mind, body, and soul all at the same time. And your friends and you can connect on that level with knowing that you might have the same musical interests as well. It may not be the same, but at least you can connect with the same genre. Whereas classical music and romantic music, you have Bach, Mozart, and you have Beethoven. And then with rock music, you have Breaking Benjamin, you have Skillet, you have Skrillex, which is more electronic. I don't know why I put that in rock music, but you get what I'm trying to say here. Music is all around us. And the other connection I can make is that music is also in nature. Now, it may not be playing on like a speaker, but music is in the trees, it is in the water, it's in the plants. When you hear the wind blowing through the trees, you can hear the rustling of the leaves, and that is music in itself. Music is being made all around us, and that in itself is just beautiful, because music is being made in every essence of the world. Now, my talk is about music and its power to heal. So music therapy is one of those not very well-known kind of things. Uh, you hear therapy as more of the occupational therapy and physical therapy. So some of those more uh, physical therapies. Music therapy is a very holistic therapy. And by that, I mean full body therapy. So it not only gets the physical portions of your body, but it also gets the mental and emotional and cognitive parts of your body. And for me, that reaches on many, many levels uh, for human beings. Music therapy, uh, especially nowadays, is being reached for people that have PTSD, anxiety, depression, and all of these up and coming mental disorders. Uh, for me right now, this music playing in this slideshow is definitely giving me a sense of uh, relief because I am anxious just talking to you. I don't know if you can tell, but I am shaking like a leaf. <laughs> and this, this is real. I'm not even joking. But can you tell that I'm even kind of uh, doing that? I hope not, but we'll keep going anyway. So music therapy is very much a full body experience. And for many people, it can help connect to them on a level that they didn't even realize because it can reach them in ways that they didn't even realize. It can 
touch their minds in a way that can reach memories that they didn't even realize that they had and can connect on a whole different level in a back part of their memory. It can reach them on physical levels that can help them to walk again. It can help them to move throughout their day and it can help them to actually get up out of bed. So how do I know so much and how can I connect on this level? Well, I'm gonna tell you. And for me to tell you, I need to tell my story. And at this point in my presentation, I need to give a trigger warning. And if any of you in this room are um, particularly not comfortable with sexual uh, talk, you are free to leave and I am totally okay with that. Okay. So coming to UMaine, I come from a very small town and I didn't have very many people from my uh, background or from my town that came with me. So I'm a very introverted person. Uh, talking up here, like I said, gives me a little bit of anxiety. So I was very afraid to come to a college that I was told had 10,000 kids. <laughs> so I thought, I'm gonna get lost. Uh, but I'm a music education major, so I was told that we have a very small um, incoming class. So I had 30, 35 kids in my class. So I thought, oh, I'm gonna get to know all of them. So it was great. I started to make friends. It was great. I started to make connections in uh, all my classes. I started to get to know all my classmates on the music education level. Now, in general education classes, you know, there's about 300 kids. <laughs> I was like, okay, I don't, I don't want to be in your classes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip those till senior year, and now I'm realizing it now. Um, <laughs> so I kind of skipped my uh, general education classes, but on the music education level, it was great. I got to know all my friends, and freshman year was really, really great. I kept uh, all of my friends that I started to make, and my boyfriend was really great as well. Um, he was very supportive through most of it. Um, until I was sexually assaulted by him. And probably right now going through your head, you're thinking, that can't happen. And I didn't think it could either. So I brushed it off. So sophomore year continued. And I finished freshman year and went to sophomore year. Kept most of my friends. Um, the only thing I had going was my music classes, and that's the only thing I wanted to keep going. Um, I skipped the rest of my classes, and the only thing I wanted was my music classes. So, and I kept going, and the only thing I wanted to attend was University Singers, and it was one of the many things that I love because I got to sing, and I got to be around people that loved music, and. It was one of the best experiences, and it still is the best experience of my life. And then my boyfriend sexually assaulted me again. And again, it's probably going through your head again that a boyfriend cannot sexually assault his girlfriend. But they can. Because as it is said, sexual assault is sexual assault if there is no consent. And there wasn't. And I did say no. And as it was, he did not care. He did not do anything. He did not care about me. He did not, he did not care if I lived or died at that point. So Marissa shut herself in a little hole. And so the only class I attended was music class. My grades dropped. I wanted to quit school, and I didn't have any friends. So sophomore year ended, boyfriend dumped me, and the summer was horrendous. But the only thing I had going for me, and the only thing I wanted was music, because it was the only thing that got me out of bed. And unfortunately, not even my friends or my family could get me out of bed. And for me, that was the worst thing in the world. But again, music was the only thing that I needed because I didn't realize how much music meant to me until I realized how much it could get me out of bed. 
So why am I so open to say what I can say when it's such a social stigma? Because this is what happens today. And this is probably going to be the most disturbing picture you are going to see all day. And out of this whole picture, these are the two most disturbing facts that I can find. That every two minutes, someone is sexually assaulted in America, and 97% of those people will never see a day in jail. And for me, I thought when I was sexually assaulted that I was the only one. And for most of us that are survivors and victims of sexual assault, we all think we are the only one. So for the silent community, we think that we can't say anything. We think that we can't speak about ourselves because, again, it's a social stigma. And I'm hoping that most of you don't think that I can't have a voice. But I know that I have a voice because I can speak my mind now. And I can speak my truth. So, unfortunately for me, rape is not just a word anymore. And it is my pain, and it will not be my pain anymore. So I'm hoping to stop the silence. Because for most people, it is very, very hard for them to even say this. And unfortunately, the media displays it as the victim is the perpetrator, and the victim is the one that caused this and brought it upon themselves because of how they dressed, because of how they acted, because of what they did, because of what they said. But unfortunately, it is not their fault. It is the person that did it to them. And we can't do anything about it. So, because of this, how Lady Gaga has displayed it, we are not alone. And I love that she did this in front of millions and millions of people. And she brought all of these survivors up and she displayed that all these people are not alone. And I knew that I was alone and I knew that I thought I was alone. I thought that it was my fault. And he, I thought that all of his friends were right, but they're wrong because I have friends in all of these pictures, even if I don't know them personally. I have all of these friends and all the friends that I know personally that I did get to tell and that I did get to know are amazing. And the boyfriend that I have now is an amazing person and he stands by me every single day. And all the people out there that can't even speak their truth are amazing people and I hope to know them all personally or know them in pictures or know them from words someday in some way shape or form because I want them to know that they are not alone and that we are not alone. So how does music therapy help and how does this all connect and how can I connect music therapy to this? Because music therapy, in some way, shape, or form, can help break that silence. Because for me today, playing that music in those slides, I'm not able to cry. This is the first time I've been able to speak to a group of people, and this is the first time I've actually been able to tell my story. I was shaking out there. I was crying. I have my mother here today because I was afraid to say anything to all of you. So music for me has helped me to actually speak and be verbal. And for a lot of people, it helps people to be nonverbal about it because they're still afraid to speak and still afraid to speak because it helps, it brings up all of those memories. So it helps in a nonverbal way. It helps in a verbal way. It also helps in a very emotional way because it takes away those memories and helps give them happy memories and all those times before that and all those times after it where they don't have to think about it. And it helps in the physical way of walking out of bed, of walking to class, of walking to work, of driving, of just getting away from everything. So 
I want to be able to break the silence and know that consent is a clear yes and that no is a clear no and that I want every survivor and every victim to know that I believe them and that everyone can believe them and that every campus is a no is a no campus and a yes is a yes campus because unfortunately not every campus is so for me to speak to all of you I hope that you can take something from my talk and I hope that you have a sense of understanding and if there is someone out there and you need if you need to speak to me or you need to speak to someone I hope that you have someone you can go to because I didn't have anyone it took me three years to come out with my truth three years and I was so afraid I had to come out to my boyfriend I was so afraid I got drunk that night to tell him. I'm serious, I did. I got drunk, it was the last time I got drunk. Cause I got in the shower and I was laughing my head off in my room, I was like, you okay? And I'm like, <laughs> but I did. I had to get drunk to actually tell my boy, current boyfriend that it happened to me, but I did. And I am so glad that I did because I had the strength to tell all of you. And I'm so glad that I did. And this quote means so much to me now, more than it did before I even saw it. Music expresses that which cannot be put into words and that which cannot remain silent. Because now I know that I am not alone. And all the survivors and victims, I hope they know that we are not alone. Thank you.